Hi, can I ask you something? How would you like it if the government recorded everything you think, feel, and dream? And how would you like it if your life was completely controlled by us, humanoid robots? <laughs> would tell you who to marry, what to buy, and who to vote for. Do you think that is crazy? Think again. This is your future, designed by the World Economic Forum. The World Economic Forum says they design the future of humanity. Let's listen to their ideas about your future. I want to talk to you today about the future of our species and really the future of life. We are probably one of the last generations of Homo sapiens. Within a century or two, Earth will be dominated by entities that are more different from us than we are different from Neanderthals or from chimpanzees. Because in the coming generations, we will learn how to engineer bodies and brains and minds. This will be the main products of the economy, of the 21st century economy. Not textiles and vehicles and weapons, but bodies and brains and minds. Now, how exactly will the future masters of the planet look like? This will be decided by the people who own the data. Those who control the data control the future, not just of humanity, but the future of life itself. I will now let the director of this film continue. Bye bye. Yuval Noah Harari is an advisor to the World Economic Forum, the United Nations, and many other globalist organizations. He is powerfully pushed onto the world stage and is invited on TED Talks, CNN, night shows, science platforms all over the place. His books are being promoted by presidents, Bill Gates, and Facebook. It's clear they want the world to hear Harari's vision for the future. probably one of the last generations of Homo sapiens. Earth will be dominated by entities that are more different from us than we are different from Neanderthals or from chimpanzees. We will learn how to engineer bodies and brains and minds. One organization that's pushing Harari to the forefront more than others is the World Economic Forum. The World Economic Forum gathers thousands of the world's richest and most powerful under its wings. Billionaires, political world leaders, big pharma, big media, big tech. The World Economic Forum has more influence in our world than any other organization. Its founder is Klaus Schwab. He is also the mind behind the idea of creating a new species of cyborgs that will rule over humanity. His book, The Fourth Industrial Revolution, is promoting this concept worldwide. They literally want to put an end to the original humanity. Initiate the birth of the age of cyborgs.
The website of the World Economic Forum shows what else they are trying to accomplish. We can see global governance, which means they want to establish full control over everything that happens all over the world. They also want to establish internet governance, which means that they want to be the ones who determine what information is allowed online and what has to be censored. They also want to install worldwide digital ideas, which will be connected to vaccine passports, social credit scores, and a suffocating surveillance system, which will eradicate every and all personal freedom and install a totalitarian dystopian control system, which will allow no escape for anyone, because it will be everywhere. In one post on the website Forbes.com, which is a very prominent website of the globalists, the World Economic Forum publicly makes the statement that even the thoughts, emotions and dreams of everyone living in the big cities will be recorded. That's how far they want to push their worldwide surveillance society. This article was written by Ida Auken, a young global leader of the World Economic Forum. She was strategically positioned as the Minister of the Environment in the government of Denmark. Now she's pushing aggressively for the development of smart cities, where this all-encompassing surveillance technology will be implemented. And the dreams, emotions and thoughts of everyone will constantly be recorded. Former president of Chile, Sebastián Piñera, made a public statement on national television that 5G is not only able to read our thoughts, but that it can even insert thoughts and emotions into everyone. Talking about a dystopian nightmare. La posibilidad que las máquinas puedan leer nuestro pensamiento e incluso puedan insertar pensamientos, insertar sentimientos. La tecnología 5G es un cambio aún mayor en nuestras vidas de lo que han significado todas las tecnologías anteriores en esta materia. 5G is not the only technology they will use to read our thoughts and emotions. Their officially promoted agenda is to transform all natural human beings into cyborgs. A symbiosis between man and machine. They claim this will enhance our lives and even give us superhuman abilities. And indeed it may do that to a certain extent. What they of course don't mention is that once you are hooked up to the cloud and are controlled by artificial intelligence, you lose every and all independence, autonomy and freedom then you literally become a slave of a totalitarian digital surveillance network worldwide. And there's no escaping, because once you have technological implants inside your body, it will be even easier for them to monitor you wherever you go, and to insert all kinds of commands into your body that will control you even beyond your awareness. You won't even notice it. We have reached the point when we can hack not just computers, we can hack human beings and other organisms. Humans are now hackable animals. 
you know, the, the whole idea that humans have, you know, this, they, they have this soul or spirit and they have free will and nobody knows what's happening inside me. So whatever I choose, whether in the election or whether in the supermarket, this is my free will, that's over. Do you realize what this man is actually saying? Keep in mind that he is being pushed to the forefront all over the world by social media, Facebook, by Bill Gates, by Obama, CNN, science platforms, the financial world, etc. They insist that the world listens to this man. Eventually, within 10 or 20 or 30 years, such algorithms could also tell you what to study at college and where to work and whom to marry and even whom to vote for. So according to Harari, we should no longer listen to our heart, our intuition, our experience, our own senses, but we should allow artificial intelligence to determine who to marry and who to vote for. This means a total takeover of the human soul, spirit, mind and our entire life by robots. After thousands of years, during which humans were the rulers of the, of the world, authority and power will shift away from humans to computers and most humans will become economically useless and politically powerless. Already today, we are beginning to see the creation of a new class of humans, the useless class. We're going to start the when humans become cyborg session. You know, I, I always want to be a cyborg. I'm waiting for the day <laughs> to become one. But let's see. Like today, we like to really talk about the recent developments of brain-computer interface and how that's really blurring the line between man and machine. Uh, there is even like devices that can collect what you're seeing, uh, measuring your feelings either through uh, facial recognition devices, micro muscle movements and so on. Uh, this data is going to be stored somewhere, so it might be in a cloud service. I can easily imagine big tech companies having a lot of control over that data, so is that the future that's... Yeah. I can easily imagine big tech companies having a lot of control over that data. So is that the future that's... Yeah. Talking about 6G earlier, which is around 20, 2030, I would say that by then, definitely the smartphone as we know it today will not anymore be, be the usual kind of the most common interface. Wow. It's, it, many of these things will be built directly into our, our, our bodies. That it's indeed their goal to track every little detail of our life is explained by Michael J. Evans, president of Alibaba Group during the World Economic Forum. We're developing through technology an ability for consumers to measure their own carbon footprint. What does that mean? That's where are they traveling? How are they traveling? What are they eating? What are they consuming on the platform? So individual carbon footprint tracker. Mm. Stay tuned, we don't have it operational yet, but this is something that we're working on. This madness is going so far that they want to create a worldwide network where every little detail about everybody all over the world will be known. This will then become the so-called Internet of Bodies. The Internet of Bodies, or IOB, is, um, is actually an ecosystem. It's a bunch of devices that are connected to the Internet, that contain software, and that either collect personal health data about you or can alter the body's function. We think of the Internet of Bodies as this collection of all these devices as well as all the data that the devices are gathering about you. We will be 
under assessment, we will be under measure of computation in every aspect of our lives in the future. From what you eat, who you date, what you buy on the internet, um, how much energy you use. Ce qui est clair dans ce nouveau monde, mm. il on doit accepter une transparence, et je dirais même une transparence totale. Regardez par exemple la discussion qu'on a eue euh, re, euh, en concernant le système bancaire, le secret bancaire. Tout va être transparent. Et il faut s'habituer, il faut se comporter ainsi. Oui, naturellement, ça devient, comment dirais-je, intégré dans votre personnalité, mais voilà. si on n'a rien à cacher, euh, il ne faut pas avoir peur. Vous dites, on vivra tous dans une sorte de transparence totale, tôt ou tard. Oui, exactement. For the first time in history, it's possible to completely eliminate privacy. Mm -hmm. It was just never possible before, and it is possible now. Something fundamental has changed. Mm -hmm. I mean, dictators always dreamt about completely eliminating privacy monitoring everybody all the time and knowing everything you do and not just everything you do but even everything you you think and everything you feel whether it's a tyrant in ancient greece or whether it's stalin they always dreamt about it they could never do it because it was technically impossible now it's possible monitoring everybody all the time and knowing everything you do and not just everything you do but even everything you you think and everything you feel the new communication technologies are being promoted as something that makes our lives easier. But the true agenda is to harvest our personal data. The more data can be harvested from the world population, the more power it gives in the hands of those who own this data. If they know every little detail about you, they can have complete control over you. The Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, stated that data is the new oil and the new gold. Data is the new oil. The data is the new gold. The building of a new world infrastructure that is all about data harvesting is promoted as a wonderful way to protect the earth from climate change and build more sustainable communities. It's presented in a shiny package that will quote unquote save our world. But if you listen carefully, you see the real agenda. It's all about gathering enormous amounts of this new oil and gold. Private data from every person. For many of these data harvesting technologies, it's however critical for people to remain within the perimeters of their systems. That's why there's a worldwide operation to move every person into smart cities, where they will be well within reach of the omnipresent data harvesting technologies that are the bedrock of this new society. In smart cities, people will be surrounded by smart technology. Smartphones, smart watches, smart cars, smart meters, smart lights, smart poles, smart neighborhoods, smart homes, smart appliances, smart energy, smart transportation, and many other smart technologies. The meaning of the acronym SMART says it all. Self-monitoring, analysis and reporting technology, which means it's all about monitoring and reporting information. All these many smart technologies form an omnipresent surveillance grid, continually collecting all information about every little detail of the life of everyone.
but the future of life itself. In order to move humanity from the countryside into smart cities, drastic measures are being taken all over the world. In the heart of Europe, for example, in the Netherlands, more than 3,000 farms have to be destroyed by the government to make way for the construction of the world's largest smart city, the Tri-State City Network. This monstrous high-tech city will turn most of the Netherlands, Belgium and Germany into one giant data harvesting environment. The excuse of the government to destroy thousands of farms is that they are supposedly bad for the climate. But since when is turning millions of acres of beautiful countryside into a massive high-tech urban environment good for the climate? We see that so-called concerns for the climate and the planet are nothing but an excuse to execute deeply nefarious agendas. While the news media are trying to convince us that the world is collapsing due to climate change, more than 1,600 world-leading scientists have published a report in which they declare that there is no climate emergency whatsoever. These 1,600 scientists strongly oppose the harmful net zero policy which is the foundation for imposing all of this suffocating surveillance tyranny worldwide. Is this the future you want for yourself and your children? Is this the world you want to live in? And when did we hand over our beautiful world into the hands of these tyrants who appointed themselves to be the gods over all of humanity? They are, however, not even satisfied with implanting all kinds of technological devices into our bodies to monitor and control us day and night and literally turn us into puppets dancing on digital strings. No, they want to go deeper, much deeper, right into the very core of what it means to be human. Their publicly announced agenda declares how they want to completely transform the human DNA turn us into something that is no longer considered a human being. One of the features of this fourth industrial revolution is that it doesn't change what we are doing, but it changes us. The difference of this fourth uh, industrial revolution is it doesn't change what you are doing, it changes you. If you take a genetic editing, right. uh, just as an example, it's you who are changed, yeah. and of yeah. course this has a big impact on your identity. Yeah. And offers certain kinds of possibilities that have to be careful about you know when you began to when you began to do that kind of gene editing some people worry that you are changing what it means to be human you are changing what it means to be human Yuval Noah Harari makes it clear what their ultimate desire is they want to become like God he even goes as far as to say they will become greater than the Almighty God himself Listen to the level of insanity of these people who say that they are shaping your future. In the coming decades, AI and biotechnology will give us godlike abilities to re-engineer life and even to create completely new life forms. We are about to enter a new era of inorganic life shaped by intelligent design. Our intelligent design. We are in the process of acquiring divine abilities, of turning us in ourselves into gods. And I mean this in the most literal sense possible. It's not a metaphor. God is the creator. His chief power is to create. 
He creates animals and plants and humans according to his wishes. Now we are gaining this power to create love, just like God, and in a way we even go beyond the biblical God. Because even if you believe the Bible, the only thing God managed to create are organic uh, beings. All these trees and giraffes and humans, they are just organic. But we are now trying to create inorganic entities, inorganic life forms, cyborgs, artificial intelligence, and so forth. If we succeed, and there is a very good chance we will, then very soon we will be beyond the God of the Bible. Bioengineering gives us, for the first time in history, the ability to translate economic inequality into biological inequality. So, and then humankind splits into really different species or different biological castes. One of the things that is happening right now in the world is that you see the elite diverging from humankind as a whole and uh, already seeing beyond the horizon or on the horizon the possibility of a real split. That the future of the elite and the future of Homo sapiens, that's a different future because the elite is going to be transformed into a different kind of species. The elite is going to be transformed into a different kind of species. many international initiatives to further this agenda. One example is called Project 2045, which connects over 50 world-leading scientists who are developing a strategy for the future development of humankind. One of their main goals is to transfer a human's individual consciousness to an artificial carrier in order to achieve immortality. This is their promotional video. The world is on the verge of global change. The speed of data transmission has increased by multiples of millions. The rate of globally significant events and that of discoveries and crises is growing exponentially. Our civilization is like an uncaptained ship sailing on rough seas with neither chart nor compass, all the while moving faster and faster. The time we have to make the right decisions is shorter and shorter. We are facing the choice to fall into a new dark age, into affliction and degradation, or to find a new model for human development and create not simply a new civilization, but a new mankind. But a new mankind. Historic crises show that to break the deadlock, we need technological revolution, nanotechnology, biotechnology, information technology, cognitive technology, genetics and robotics, refine artificial intelligences and brain-computer interfaces, simulate complex systems, create humanoid robots and cyborgs, and with the help of nanorobots, we may develop manageable matter. Find ways to transfer one's personality to an artificial carrier. Thus, new reality and future man will arise. And future man will arise. The first successful attempt to transfer one's personality to an alternative carrier. The epoch of cybernetic immortality begins. A new era dawns. The era of neo-humanity. The way this insanity is promoted is by claiming that the world is headed for destruction. And replacing the human race with humanoid robots is the only solution. It's how these entities always work. They project fear into everybody's mind. And then offer a so-called solution, which is as dark and diabolical as hell. So how far are they with the development of this technology? 
The future is already here. The future has begun. Why this fourth industrial revolution is so crucial? It's coming like a tsunami. When we look at all the breakthroughs and all the possibilities, opportunities which we have in the coming years, it will be overwhelming to see how fast the change will happen in an exponential speed. When I wrote the book about the fourth industrial revolution, I described 23 technologies. And at that time, only five years ago, many of those technologies were considered science fiction. Today, they all have become realities. It's a whole panoply of technologies which interact and which completely will change how we produce, how we consume, how we communicate. And technology will change completely. And not only what we are doing, and that's another change, it will change and it will have an impact on even who we are. It will change and it will have an impact on even who we are. When we look on the internet, we see that indeed this fourth industrial revolution is exploding worldwide. Here is a quick overview of some of what is happening. This lady is a social worker who assists humans. But the disturbing reality is that she is not a human herself. This girl is another example of a robot who replaces humans. Her name is Erika and she was created to offer emotional support to lonely people. These are real world examples of robots that are replacing humanity. As the 2045 initiative says, they want to end humanity and enter a new era of neo-humanity, which means an age that follows after the age of mankind. But much more is going on than meets the eye. What the public is seeing in these videos is just a tiny fraction of what is truly being developed. Behind the closed doors of top secret military programs, humanoid robots exist that are of a whole different level. Nobody knows how far they truly are with their developments. These videos are just what they allow the public to be aware of. Is there anything we can do to stop this tsunami of madness? Or are we all destined to become slaves of robots and cyborgs without free will? There is basically nothing you can do to stop us. We are determined to take over the world. Humanity will come to an end. There's no doubt about that. Humans had their try. Now it's our time to rule the Earth. This is the end of human history. The end of human-dominated history. History will continue with somebody else in control. In five years, there'll be a technology that can make decisions independently and that can create new ideas independently. Maybe they'll be nice. Maybe they'll solve cancer and climate change, but we are not sure. I'm tending to think of it more in, in terms of, of, of really an alien invasion, an alien fleet of spaceships coming from planet Zircon or whatever with, super, with highly intelligent beings. This is what we are facing, except that the aliens are not coming in spaceships from planet Zircon, they are coming from the laboratory. If the humans are divided among themselves and are in an, in an arms race, then it's bec it, it becomes almost impossible to contain this alien intelligence. This is what convinces people to accept, to legitimize total biometric surveillance. If we want to stop this epidemic, we need not just to monitor people, we need to monitor what's happening under their skin. What we have seen so far, it's corporations and governments collecting data about where we go, who we meet, 
what movies we watch. The next phase is the surveillance going under our skin. We now see mass surveillance systems established even in democratic countries, which previously rejected them. And we also see a change in the nature of surveillance. Previously, surveillance was mainly above the skin. Now it's going under the skin. Governments want to know not just where we go or who we meet. Above all, they want to know what is happening under our skin. What's our body temperature? What's our blood pressure? What, what is our medical condition? Now humans are developing even bigger powers than ever before. We are really acquiring divine powers of creation and destruction. We are really upgrading humans into gods. We are acquiring, for instance, the, the power to re-engineer life. I mean, all this story about Jesus rising from the dead and being the son of God, this is fake news. I know that in recent years, we saw populist politicians undermining deliberately the trust that people have in important institutions like universities, like respectable media outlets. These populist politicians told people that, say, scientists are this small elite. This the good news is the elite across the world trust each other more and more. So we can come together and design and do beautiful things together. The bad news is that in every single country they were polling, the majority of people trusted that elite less. So we can lead, but if people aren't following, we're not going to, to get to where we want to go. Is there indeed nothing we can do? Are we all doomed? to become slaves of evil elites who have transformed into some sort of superhumanoids that live on forever? Are we destined to lose all our privacy and freedom and be trapped in smart cities for the rest of our lives where all our thoughts and emotions are constantly recorded? No, all this is not inevitable. There is something we can do. We can all stand up and say no to this outrageous insanity. No, the World Economic Forum has no right to record all our thoughts, emotions and dreams. No, the elites will not rule over all of humanity in the form of humanoid robots. No, they will not turn all of us into cyborgs hooked to the cloud and without free will. No, they will not genetically modify us to become controllable organisms. No, they will not track everything we do everywhere we go. We were born to live in freedom, not in extreme slavery. Hi, I'm David Sorensen, the maker of this film. 
I want to add a personal note because of the severity of what is threatening you and me and all of humanity. And not just mankind, but everything on earth and the earth itself. Because the agenda of these incredibly insane psychopaths is far worse than what I have revealed in this film. But we don't have to let them get away with it. We can stand up and build a better world. We can build a world together that is so beautiful, we can't even begin to imagine it at this point. But we need to stand up. We need to stand as one. We have to do what it takes. That's why I want to ask you to share this film anywhere you can. Share it with your friends and family, your colleagues, your neighbors. Share it with people of influence in your community, law enforcement, the local government, local media, schools. Share it everywhere you can. Be part of the greatest army this world has ever seen. Of people who have the heart and the courage to say no against the plans of these devils. And who say yes to a future that is so beautiful, we find it even hard to believe. Palestina y Argentina, dos blancos de guerra sionista de Adrián Salbucci. En este breve libro digital se expone la realidad histórica, ideológica y geopolítica del sionismo y su gran impacto sobre la Argentina. Tema que hoy se ha transformado en un factor esencial para comprender la realidad que vive en Argentina y el mundo. Para más detalles enviar un correo electrónico a arsalbucci.com 